Hi there everyone. Welcome back to the sixth video in my training series entitled Understanding EMV. We are currently in section four and this deals with EMV issuing. So let's have a look at what makes up section four. Okay, in this video we will be touching on card hardware and card software. Uh, and the remainder of the series will be dedicated to discussing EMV counters, EMV parameters, and EMV cryptography. So let's get straight into it. The very first component that makes up an EMV card is the plastic itself. Okay, now we all know what this plastic looks like, more or less. Uh, one thing to note is that the size and the quality of the plastic is regulated by the card schemes. Okay, so for an issuing bank to issue a card to market, uh, they need to certify this with, with the relevant card scheme. And, and the card scheme uh, will ensure that, that the dimension parameters are met. Okay? And, and so this means that the card has to be you know, within certain parameters of a certain uh, size, of a certain shape. It's got to be of a certain thickness. Um, and it's got to be of a certain quality. And, and obviously there are approval processes in place that usually the pers personalization bureaus uh, will conduct with EMV Co and with, uh, with the relevant card schemes. Okay. Now, even though we use the term plastic, and, and this is an industry term within, within the card industry, uh, a, a plastic could also refer to cards that are made of either metal or ceramic. Okay, and, and these cards are usually, you know, for 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 your high earning products, your more prestige products. Uh, and historically, uh, uh, this took the form of metal cards. You know, but there are obvious issues in terms of a metal card being able to uh, transact a contactless transaction because of interference with the antenna. Uh, but a good solution to that was actually the introduction of ceramic cards. Okay, the next component of the EMV card we need to discuss is the contact plate. And so what is a contact plate? The, the contact plate is that metallic piece, you know, of, of indeterminate shape that appears on the front of your card. Okay, and this piece of metal could take, you know, various shapes. It, it's, it's usually rectangular or square, but you'll, you'll also see some of these chips Oh, sorry, some of these contact plates uh, that are oval or round. So if you go a bit deeper into the actual contact plate itself, I mean, this is just one sample of what a contact plate could look like. Uh, there are you know, various different designs and patterns. Uh, what's important to understand is that the contact plate is, is segmented. And, and you'll see distinct segments. And in this case, we can see eight different segments. These, these segments are strictly controlled by EMV code. Okay, so they are labeled you know, C1 to C4 on the left-hand side and then C5 to C8 on the right-hand side, and, and it always has to be like this. Okay? And each segment is responsible for a different function. And I mean, you know, typically, if you, if you look at this table, which, which appears in the EMV code book one, uh, you know, C1, uh, to this component of the contact plate is responsible of, you know, for receiving electricity and for powering up the chip. And you know, one of the most important segments of the contact plate would be C7, and that's where all of the data input and output occurs. Contact points must always be in the same position. So what, what exactly is the reason for this? Okay. And it's fairly straightforward. All terminals that are EMB compliant that are deployed to market have probes uh, within within the card reader, uh, and and these probes are always fixed in a specific position. And so the intent here is that when you insert a card into a terminal, uh, each of the relevant contact points or, or, or probes within the terminal needs to connect with the corresponding segment of the contact plate of the card. So if you know you've got a a probe within the terminal that supplies electricity to the chip, and that has to always touch segment C1 of the contact plate. And, and similarly, there's another probe 
you know, that, that connects with segment C7, and this has to be in exactly the right place. If it's not, the, the, we are not going to be able to fulfill the purpose, you know, of, 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 of the segments within the contact plate. So the location of this is, is, is strictly governed by EMV Co. Uh, I've, I've pulled this image from, from the EMV Co book, book one. Uh, and you will see that here are the guidelines that you know each of these plates, or sorry, each of these segments need to appear you know, within a minimum, a minimum and a maximum range, both with relation to the left-hand side of, of the card as well as with the upper edge of the card. If you drill a bit deeper now, so if we are going to take a closer look at the chip itself, so basically, if you're looking at your card and what and all you can see is a contact plate, uh, you know, if you really want to want to have a look at it, you 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 know, rip that contact plate off, turn it around, and what you would see, or the back of the contact plate will look something like this, right? So, this larger sort of gray area that's a contact plate. Uh, this little inner section here, that's resin, okay? And the resin is used to bond the contact plate to the chip so that it, it doesn't fall off of the plastic, right? If you look closer, you'll see there's a little rectangular or square object here. Now, this is the actual chip itself, and this, you know, generally tends to be approximately two millimeters by two millimeters in size. So, uh, as you can imagine, this is very, very small. If you look closely, you'll see we've got little filaments that connect the, the, the microchip to the contact plate. And so, you know, this is, this is with reference to the previous slide. You know, so I've got one filament from, 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 from the microchip that's going into C1 and not into C2 and not into C3. C4 is not used, so it's not there. And you know, here's, here's the one going into C7. Okay. So if you take a deeper look into what's on this chip itself, what we will see is you know sort of something like this. And and so what we're trying to prove here is that the chip is a computer, right? So if if you look at what what's actually contained within the chip, you'll be able to very easily draw the parallel between a computer, you know, be it a desktop or a laptop, and, and this microchip, this tiny microchip that's embedded within your credit to debit card. Okay, so the first thing is a CPU. And I'm sure most of us know what a CPU is. It's a central processing unit, and this is the hardware component within the computer, and obviously within the chip, that's responsible for all of the processing required. Next, we have something called RAM, which is random access memory. And this is the amount of memory available to the computer or to the chip for it to run its programs and applications. It's found in all computers. Next, we have ROM or read-only memory. And this is memory storage that can be you know, you know, written to once and you know, never again written to, so thereafter it can only be read. So in the EMV world, whatever we need to write uh, that should never ever change, we would write it to ROM. And so typically the ROM would contain your chip operating system routines. Okay. okay and, and we're still on this theme of, of trying to draw the parallel between the chip and a computer. So what's next? We've got something called EEPROM, which stands for Electrically Erasable and Programmable ROM. And this is the main storage facility on the chip for EMV parameters you know, and, and other EMV elements that may be accessed and changed throughout the life of the card. Okay. And I mean, if you can draw some to this to your, to, your, to your computer's hard drive or, you know, or flash drive. All right. And lastly, we have something called an MCP, or a Mathematical Coprocessor. Now, this is a dedicated processing unit. Uh, that, that supplements the CPU in its processing, and it's used specifically for dynamic data authentication. And you know, in today's world, that you know, this is basically uh, made up of either DDA, that, which, which is called dynamic data authentication, or CDA, which is combined data authentication. Don't worry about DDA and CDA too much. We'll be looking at uh, this, uh, you know, during the acquiring section when we actually deal uh, camo over the. Okay, so, so that, that takes care of the hardware, right? So let's have a look, or let's talk briefly about software. Now, as you know, all computers need 
or even mobile phones need an operating system. Can the operating system X uh, as a communicator between your software and your hardware, right? The operating system is, is what allows your applications to actually be able to run off the hardware, to allow your hardware to process those, those software requests. So, you know, typically a desktop or, or laptop environment, you're looking at Windows, you're looking at Linux, you're looking at Mac OS, you know, mobile phones, you're looking at iOS, or you're looking at Android or whatever other operating systems there are out there. Now, in the card world, in EMV, you know, each card manufacturer will have, generally tends to have their own unique operating systems. And some of these are completely native to the manufacturer. Only they use it. Okay? Uh, but you will find other operating systems that are endorsed by card schemes and you know, some, some manufacturers will make use of those as well. Okay? And I'm not going to go into too much of detail around the operating system. It's, it's not really relevant to the training. Next, we speak about applications and, you know, in the EMV world, we're going to talk about applications like we're going to talk about payment-specific applications. So applications like you know, a Mastercard credit application, a Mastercard debit application, a Visa electron application, uh, a Visa credit application, and, or they could be non-payment applications. You know, things like, for example, storage applications where you can store medical details in your card. There could be transit applications that allows you to use your card. You know to ride you know, on, on, on the public bus system or the public train system. Okay? And if you look at the, at the comparison to a computer or mobile phone, if, if, if you're talking about applications there, you know, I mean, you know, Excel is, is an application that's used specifically for, for spreadsheets. Word is an application used to, you know, to, to write up letters. Uh, you know, Chrome is an application used to browse the internet. So, so, so we have these various applications and, and they are intended with a specific purpose in mind. Okay, uh, and 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 the same applies in the EMB world. Okay, what you should also note is that there are different application versions. So in, let's look at Excel. So you know you could have Excel 2003 or Excel 2007 or whatever the latest Excel version is. And what you find is that even though the versions are different, right, the, the applications are all intended for the same purpose. Okay, it, it's to run spreadsheets. Okay, but you'll find that later versions may have you know, maybe more functionality, maybe some functionality taken away, uh, and and they could work, you know, slight, slightly differently from previous versions. Now the same applies in the EMV world, right? You could have applications like like an M chip two point one application, uh, and then you know that was replaced with an M chip four select application, which you know sort of did the same thing, but maybe now it offered more features, and then and then that moved on to an M chip advanced application, you know, versus has a versus one point four application, versus one point five, versus one point six, but the principle is the same, right? So uh, these application versions keep, keep getting updated, you know, and 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 with later updates or, or later versions, you know, maybe they're more secure, they offer more functionality, they take away you know at risk features in 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 previous versions. Okay, so this, in a nutshell, is is the is the video that that covers, uh, you know, what are the hardware and software components that go into an EMV card. So yeah, thank you uh, for watching the video, and I look forward to catching up with you guys in my next one.